I like to get into my pyjamas and curl up on the sofa under a blanket. It doesn't have to be silent, but it has to be calm. Um, as a reader, obviously, I think we all go through stages where it's really difficult to concentrate. Mm. Um, particularly, um, you know, we've all experienced lockdown and, you know, so any sort of trauma or time that we, we get, you know, anxio anxious or nervous. Um, when I've been through, you know, recently, you know, I've been grieving um, for a loss. So those difficult times are particularly um, hard to concentrate. Um, I think, th you know, I think that's reflected in children as well. And children go through so many difficult times, ups and downs in their lives where, you know, there will be times where it's particularly hard for them to concentrate and focus when it's time for reading. I think that's a really good point. I think there's also everyday like experiences and times which are more tricky. I know myself, if I'm on a busy train or on a tube, I find it really difficult to engage deeply in, like a, in a uh, novel. Mm -hmm. But I can read kind of lower stakes text, I guess, like Twitter or scrolling through my phone. I find that easier. I, I can concentrate and engage in that in those spaces. But I do find it difficult. It's noisy. It's lots of a busy environment to deeply engage in the And text. that's still reading, but mm. um, obviously if you want to try and you know, spend more time trying to get really invested into a book, you mm. know, it's, it's difficult. I come from a large household, so with five children, it's, it is very difficult to find that time to sit and concentrate. And it's, it's difficult for the siblings as well, you mm. know, to try and find time, but it's about creating that space, isn't it? And, um, you know, finding pockets of space or, you know, um, time during the day to be able to concentrate. And I guess that's similar in the classroom, isn't it? There's 30 children often, sometimes more, and trying to find those pockets of time where there is calm and quiet for children to engage, while also balancing the social aspect of reading as well. Mm -hmm. So children having time to chat about books and to share books together. But it's, it's challenging, isn't it, to find that space in the, in the busy day? Of you need like a good 20 minutes to be able to really get into the story, get back into the story when it's a fiction book. Whereas with the non-fiction, you are able to, you know, just pick a page and, yeah. and you know, you Picking get something. Out. Yeah, and and that's important as the rights of the reader as well. Mm. You know, to be, you know, allow ourselves to dip in and out, and you know, equally with the children, to allow them to dip in and out of books. That's why, you know, spaces within school are so important mm. um, to find reading spaces within school. So if you haven't got a library, what's really important is to make sure the book corners are enticing, to make sure that there's seating areas that, you know, there's and there's time given mm. to be actually to, to be able to sit in the library in the book corners to read. You, you definitely see that with children in the classroom um, sometimes perhaps chatting to their friends or not not engaging in the text because mm. perhaps they're finding it difficult to concentrate or perhaps sending to space looking kind of they're, they're not engaging with with the text in front of them and then obviously support staff are you know really really important in this is in that they are able to take the children away to the library for some short time away from the busyness of the classroom mm. or you know in you know whether it's intervention rooms or what have you and you know just to be able to spend time getting really deeply invested into a book and to actually be able to concentrate for some children in a large classroom, that's not, that's not going to work for them. I think that's a really good point. There's the physical space, isn't there? And there's also the, the environment in terms of the noise level, the busyness of it. There's mm -hmm. two things to think about when um, providing that time for children to engage deeply in text. Role models really, really important. Mm. So in terms of reading aloud, um, when, once we have you know, that sort of sacred reading aloud time in every classroom, then the children know what it feels like to actually get lost in a book. And I think for a lot of children, they don't get, ever get that time where they can allow themselves to get lost in a book. Once you've experienced it, then, you know, it's sort of like that magic, you know, you feel that magic. Um, but unless it's been role modelled to them first, they're, not, they're often not going to get that. Yeah, so it's really important to ensure that, you know, they've seen and felt that. Mm for them to want to then go on and do that on their own, you know, to spend that time. And if children do find reading tricky, having that read aloud time does enable them to, as you say, get lost in the book, feel that experience, even if they do find the act of reading um, quite difficult, they, mm -hmm. they've, they've got that time and space because they've been read aloud to from great texts. I think it's even more important with those children, they get a similar experience, the best we can kind of replicate that in school. So the importance of those shared read aloud times with the whole class listen to a high quality text, read by the teacher. I think that provides another, a different space, but another space for children to engage deeply with text. Um, so having that space is really important. But it's also a bonding experience for the class. It helps build those communities we've spoken about because everybody's listened to the same text. They've got that book in common. Everyone's enjoying that experience together. Um, and finding that space and time for that daily is, is really, really important. 
and that helps to build um, the reading community and you know the children will then have that shared book that they can you know use to um, begin conversations around reading whether the child liked the book or not you know it'll help them to you know find books that they will then later be able to engage in it's about um, engaging with parents and finding out how how our children are coping at home and you know is do they have that space and often you know parents you know might not be able to give the time you know with working families it, it's very difficult mm. um, but just to find that pocket space whether it's you know while while a parent's cooking and you know the child's reading to them like I say on the commute um, to, to and from school um, and also libraries is to you know encourage parents to tap into the library spaces and you know you know, point out where the libraries are because quite often parents don't know where their local library is. You know, showing them that you know that this is a great space. It's a free space as well, where you know you can take your children along to, and you know they've got that time to be able to engage with books and read. I think that public libraries can play such a great role in in homes where they are really busy and there's lots of people around. It can be chaotic at times. Having that space that's dedicated to reading, mm -hmm. both the library and school and the public libraries and the reading corners in the classroom. They really kind of, the, the space is for reading, so children perhaps feel more likely to engage in text in a deep way in those spaces. Absolutely, and um, that, that, that's the way we'll encourage them to, you know, be lifelong readers as well, because, you know, they'll, they'll have felt that, and then they'll, ha they'll, they'll have learnt, you know, where it is that they can feel comfortable reading. I think one of the key things to remember as well is that um, safe spaces and reading spaces look different for everyone. So within our community, you know, we have a lot of children that live in tower blocks and, you know, where do they find that space? Well, one of our children, she actually came to me and she says that, you know, she loves reading. And the reason that she had started to love reading was one of our older children had spent time with her reading in the communal gardens. And, you know, every day throughout the summer, they would sit together and, you know, building a community of readers is really important. So seeing, you know, children with their older friends, sitting with them, reading them and encouraging them to love reading. So it's not always about the adults within the family. It's the adults around them or the older children around and their peers who can help support that love of reading. Um, and as I say that, you know, that doesn't always necessarily have to be within the home. And, you know, we are very fortunate to have a really good community here. And, you know, within the green spaces, you know, lots of events go on um, where books are readily available for, to be shared with the children. So for some children who don't have those cosy bedtime reading experiences at, at home. Uh, I think what's really important is um, actually having a conversation with the child whenever you see that they're struggling to read. What is it that's making them not able to focus? Um, and, you know, that could be just the classroom environment, mm. could be that it's too noisy. Um, you know, a lot of our children wear ear defenders and that might be something that they need just to, you know, cancel out the noise that's around them. But also it might be the seating, it might be the fact that, you know, they, they just aren't comfortable where they are. And, you know, we've had, you know, children where they want to take their shoes off just to be able to relax a bit. Um, but the important thing is to have these conversations. When I do see a child bring a book back to the library and you know, I'm quite sure that they haven't read it or if I'll ask a question, they say, oh no, I'm, I, I just didn't like it. I'll ask them, you know, um, you know, what was the issue with the book? You know, and if they say they didn't like it, then we find, help them to find something else. But um, often, you know, when you come from a big family or if you come from a, you know, a place where you know, there's emotional difficulties behind reading because, as I say, if there's a trauma that you've had, if there's um, difficulties at home, then you're not able to concentrate. Um, it's worth exploring that with the child. Um, so we do have these conversations and then we think about you know, how we can support them with finding a space for reading. What I tend to do a lot as well give, um, is by giving advice by what my children would be doing. Um, so I know that with my children, and with my older children, they don't always find a quiet space until bedtime. And at bedtime, they might be too tired to read. So they might read on the commute to school. Um, with my younger daughter, she likes to come read to me while I'm cooking. So it's about finding a space and helping children to find pockets of space within their timetable at home or within the space that they have at home. I think, yeah, that, that similar conversation, knowing our children as readers at home, but also in school. So where do they want, what kind of environment do they want to read in? Do they want a kind of buzzy environment where people are chatting? Um, or do they want a more quiet space? And that might change, I guess, day to day or, or moment to moment, depends on the needs of the children and what, what, they're, what they're thinking about. And I guess it's about finding that balance in the classroom, space for children to chat and talk about books, 
um, and space for children if they want to, to read quietly and independently um, and how we can create spaces so perhaps children going to read outside on a sunny day, perhaps having it, um, one part of the classroom where children are chatting, the other part where children are choosing to read independently um, and creating that time and space for mm. children to engage in either or both of those things. It's about knowing our children as readers and knowing what they need in that particular moment of that particular day. I think knowing what kind of text they want to engage with, what kind of environment they want to engage with, whether that's a chatty social one or a more independent one, and really finding that, that time and space for children to engage both in those types of text and in those types of environment where they feel like they can engage meaningfully in text. And I think those experiences or those preferences might change day to day or within days. Um, and it's about really knowing our children's readers, having that conversation and finding that space for them to, to do that. Yeah, and it's ensuring that those conversations take place in school between adults, between children. And, you know, what I find what's really lucky about having the library is that those conversations take place naturally in the library and in those reading corners. And, you know, if we provide that for them, then, you know, it makes it easier on us as well to be able to support them with I, their reading choices. I completely agree. And I think it's really important that we as adults and reading teachers and reading librarians engage in those conversations, tune in and listen so we really know our children's readers and what, what they want from their reading experience in school.